prayer and preaching that begins on page 260 in your hymnal. <laughs> this is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting. In the name of the Lord is to be grace. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful. So tender and abounding in steadfast love and repentance of evil. Jesus said, If any man would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Christ was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Gave him the name 
that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us rise in honor of our Lord for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Today's Gospel lesson comes from Matthew, chapter 21, beginning with verse 1, a traditional uh, reading for Palm Sunday. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her cold by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell him that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken to the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle, and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of them and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. This is the word of the Lord. We continue with the response. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He was delivered out to death. He was delivered for the sins of the people. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. He was delivered out to death. He was delivered for the sins of the people. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He was delivered out to death. He was delivered for the sins of the people. Congregation may be seated. At this time, I would invite the children to come forward to the children's message.
understands. So now here, you can learn more about Jesus when he wrote in Jerusalem. See, there's a little maze here. And to the gospel. Yeah. That's cool. Well, there you go. You can go back to your seat. Oh, sure. remain seated, but we continue with the catechism portion of the service of prayer and preaching. At this time, we will say the Ten Commandments, the Apostles' Creed, and close with the Lord's Prayer. You shall have no other gods. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his manservant, or maidservant, his ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. I believe in God the Father Almighty. Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Of Michigan weather. 
it can also describe the attitude of many people. At times, people can feel strongly about something, and then with time, uh, those strong feelings sort of slip away. Sadly, at times, people can feel close to their Lord, and then they can drift away from Him. In the passion story of our Lord's suffering and death, the change in attitude of the Jerusalem crowd has always been somewhat of a mystery. On Palm Sunday, they were shouting praise and giving Jesus a king's welcome. A few short days later, they're screaming for his death. The reason for their change in attitude and what we can learn from it for our lives is the focus of our message this day. On Confirmation Sunday, as we all publicly profess that we are Christ's disciples, we consider the question of what kind of disciples are we? Are we hot or cold? It must have been quite a sight on that first Palm Sunday in Jerusalem. At first, news trickled in that he was coming. Jesus of Nazareth, the great teacher, the wonder worker, who some claimed was the Messiah. I mean, there were already more people in Jerusalem than usual because of the coming Passover. And so gradually, as word of Jesus' arrival spread, the crowds grew. And soon it seemed as if the whole population of Jerusalem was out there lining the streets to catch a glimpse of him. In terms of drawing people's attention, this was the high point of Christ's earthly ministry. And on the outside, all of this looked quite impressive. I mean, people were climbing trees so that they could rip down palms and put them in his path. Some even took off their coats and laid them on the path in order to form a carpet for Jesus to travel on. Some were there with their children singing. Singing broke out as the multitude shouted, Hosanna! To the Son of David, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The crowd was brimming with excitement. They shouted their devotion and adoration. And to the casual observer, it would indeed seem like this crowd was filled, filled with disciples of Christ. But we know that was not the case. The shouts of the crowd on that first Palm Sunday may have seemed impressive, but they did not reveal a lasting faith in Christ. Oh, the crowd shouted praises and Hosanna, but not for the right reason. The multitude may have said and done the right things on Palm Sunday, but it was not because they knew who Jesus Christ really was. It was not because they trusted him as their savior from sin and death. In fact, by the end of this same week, this crowd had grown cold. Quickly, they turned against Jesus. By Friday, the hosannas had faded away and were replaced by the shout, of crucify him. The blessed is he, became, let his blood be on us and on our children. We might say the excitement and devotion of the crowd gave way to the anger and hatred of the mob. And the question, of course, is why? Why were these people so changeable? How could they be so hot one minute and so cold the next? There were probably a number of factors, but the most important one for our consideration is that they had set their minds on the wrong expectation. You see, many had expected Jesus to be a, a military king, a political force of power who would drive the Romans out of their beloved land. Others had expected him to be a bread king, like when he miraculously fed the 5,000, they figured that life would be easy, that Jesus would give them everything that they wanted. But then as the days went by, 
the people began to realize that their expectations were not going to be met. And when that happened, their joy turned to frustration, then their frustration turned to hostility and rejection. The crowds turned cold. The king whose arrival they celebrated became the criminal whose death they demanded. And we may shake our heads at how changeable the crowds were. But then let me ask you, do you really think that you would have been any different? Or maybe a better question to ask would be, do you really think you are any different? How often, like the crowds of Jesus' day, have we not felt the commitment and devotion to our Lord, Lord grow cold? Because we feel that he has not met our expectations. In our 1030 service this morning, eighth graders will be received as communicant members of Trinity by right of confirmation. In preparation, everything has been made ready. The arch is up. The flowers are arranged. Everyone is dressed in their best for the special day. Those 11 young men and women will stand before the congregation. They will publicly profess their faith in Jesus Christ, a sight every bit as moving as the shouts of the crowd on that first Palm Sunday as Jesus rode into Jerusalem. Think back. You will profess that you believe that Jesus was your Savior as well. Think back to your own confirmation. You stood and you said the teachings of the Bible are true and you believe them. You declare that you will continue steadfast in this confession of faith and that you will risk all, even death, rather than fall away from it. Confirmation Sunday is always a very special time for the church. It is the day on which we all reaffirm our commitment and devotion to Christ. And yet, in too many instances, those who profess their faith and devotion so impressively on Confirmation Sunday change, like the crowds in Jerusalem. No, maybe it doesn't happen in five short days. But over time, that faithfulness can grow cold. Commitment turns to inactivity. The confession of faith turns into excuses about why the person doesn't attend worship or go to communion regularly. Those who have professed the Bible to be true now no longer feel a need to read or study or hear it. The excitement and devotion of that special day can all too quickly turn to apathy and indifference. But why? Why has this happened in the past? Why do we fear this will happen in the future? Why is it that God's people go from hot to cold? I think it is the same reason as the crowd in Jesus' day. People often have the wrong expectations. Maybe some expected the Christian life to be free from all trials and troubles that God in his might would protect them from all calamities. And when the hard times come, when they're forced to bear a cross, they become disillusioned and they fall away. Or maybe some expect God to give them all the things that they want in life. That because they are Christians, the Lord will bestow on everything their heart desires. And when that doesn't happen, they gradually lose faith. Or maybe some expect that after confirmation, they made it. That they could not possibly grow anymore in their faith, and so they neglect the word and sacraments. They do not feed their faith. And so consequently, it dies. How can we keep from becoming fickle and instead remain faithful to our Lord? How can we guard our hearts and minds from wrong? and unrealistic expectations. The only way that will happen is to keep our focus this Palm Sunday, not on the impressive display of the crowds then, or on the impressive words spoken now, but to keep our focus on the one who rode through that crowd 
the one who is in our midst today. We must keep our focus on Jesus Christ, because despite the fickleness of the many, our Savior remained faithful. Because you see, the really ironic thing about that first Palm Sunday is that people became discouraged because they were looking for a king and a savior. And that's exactly what Jesus really was and still is. No, Jesus did not come to be a political king, but a spiritual one who rules in the hearts of those who trust in him. He came not to bring victory over the Romans, but over far greater enemies, sin, death, and the devil. He does not supply gifts for his followers in the way that we would think of gifts. Not earthly gifts, but gifts beyond our wildest dreams. Not free food and riches, but gifts far more valuable. Gifts like the forgiveness of sins, salvation, and faith. He was everything the crowds then and now are looking for. And so much more. Christ remained faithful. He did not turn around and desert the crowds, even though he knew how fickle they were. He does not desert or abandon us, even when we turn away from him. He keeps his promises. He went to the cross, suffering in our place, taking our punishment upon himself. And he is still with us today, for his promise remains true. Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. He comes to us through his word and through the sacraments to create faith, to strengthen faith. He goes with us in our daily lives. He helps us through our times of trouble and he provides for our needs. Oh, we may turn cold and forget about Christ from time to time, but he never forgets about us. His love for us never grows cold. He wants to be our Savior and Lord, to live in us throughout our daily lives, even as we promised way back when in our confirmation vows. As I said, today is Confirmation Sunday, not just for our confirmants, but for all of us. Every day in the life of a Christian should be one in which we die to sin and pledge ourselves anew to God's plan for our lives. Think back to the day when you were confirmed and remember those vows. Remember those vows you took before God's altar. And as you do so, remember the faithfulness Christ has shown to you and strive to be faithful yourself. May we all follow his example. May we let him shape and mold our expectations to conform to God's will for our lives. Call upon him and know that he will always, always, be there for you. Don't be hot and then cold, like the crowd on that first one Sunday. Don't let the hosannas and praise of yesterday and today fade because you think that Christ falls short of your expectations. Remember his faithfulness and let it empower you to faithful living. Let each day be a confirmation day in your life. A day on which you reaffirm your vows and follow your faithful, unchangeable Lord your whole life through. Amen. We rise. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, may keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We remain standing and we sing our human response in 441. <laughs>
morning, we ask God to grant comfort for the family of Art Wirtz, the father of Janet Weiss. Uh, Art died uh, last Monday. His funeral was Thursday at Zion Lutheran in Freeland. We also ask God's blessings upon this year's confirmation class. So we continue with responsive prayer, as you see it printed on page 265. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have your mercy. For the gift of divine peace and of pardon with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have your mercy. For the holy Christian church here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have your mercy. For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have for seasonable weather, and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have for those who labor, for those whose work is difficult and dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphan, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the sick and dying, and for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Lord God, the maker of heaven and earth, the giver of life, we thank you for all the mercies that you granted to our brother hard works during his earthly life, especially for calling him to faith in Jesus Christ. Comfort his loved ones who mourn his death with the hope of a glorious resurrection and a happy reunion in heaven. Help us always to prepare our hearts to fall asleep in faith and finally receive the glory promised to all who trust in your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness in bringing these young sons and daughters of ours, to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for enabling them both with the heart to believe and with the mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that bringing forth the fruits of faith, they may continue steadfast and victorious to the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness. Let us pray to the Lord. Finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty and everlasting God the Father, who sent your Son to take our nature upon himself and to suffer death on the cross, that all mankind should follow the example of his great humility, Mercifully grant that we may both follow the example of our Savior Jesus Christ in his patience and also have our portion in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart that by patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we pray together Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over With our canticle, we uh, we substitute a different canticle during the season of Lent, and 
so I thought since we will, for our confirmation service, be singing a very old traditional confirmation hymn, hymn 689, Let Me Be Thine Forever, we can sing it as our canticle this morning. Let's remain standing for hymn 689.
welcome you to God's house this day, and I would invite you to shake the hands of the people around you and share God's blessing. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. strive to live for him. 